Welcome to the lesson video for section 2.5 in Algebra 2. We're going to learn how to use linear models today. So our objectives are we can write linear equations that model real world data and we can also make predictions from linear models. So as you know I like to emphasize real life applications of the material that we're learning in class. And when we graph data pairs for real world situations Sometimes they fall in a line and sometimes they don't. However, we can use a linear function to model their relationship. So before we learn how to create a trend line and get a line of best fit, let's talk about what a scatter plot is and what correlation is. A scatter plot is a graph that relates two sets of data by plotting the data as ordered pairs. We can use scatter plots to determine the strength of the relationship, which is called the correlation between data sets. So you can see below we have several different graphs of correlation. The first one is strong and negative correlation because you can see it is close to the shape of a line and also it is decreasing as the x's are increasing, the y's are decreasing. So you can see it models like a negative slope. A weak negative correlation would be similar, except the data points are a little bit more spread out. No correlation, you cannot tell if it's increasing or decreasing, so it's just random points. Weak positive, um, so it's like a positive slope, but the points are not so close together, and then strong positive would be it models a line, and the points are close together, and it models a positive slope. The closer the data points fall along the line, the stronger the relationship is between those two variables and also the positive or negative correlation is also stronger. Here's example one. The table lists average monthly temperatures and electricity costs for a Texas home in 2008. The table displays the values rounded to the nearest whole number. Make a scatter plot. How would you describe this situation? So as you can see in the tables below, we have a year's worth of temperatures and bills. We're going to first of all make a scatter plot that shows this relationship and then we're going to figure out what the correlation is. Make sure you title and label your axes for the graph. And because the temperature does not depend on the electric bill, it's actually the other way around. The electric bill depends on the temperature. The temperature is the independent variable and that's why I listed that on the x-axis. And the electricity bill is the dependent variable, so that's on the y-axis. Now we're going to graph these points. Now that we have our points plotted, let's discuss the correlation that we see in the graph. As the temperature increases, the electricity cost also increases. The points are relatively tightly clustered around a line. You can see in the graph it looks like a line. Therefore, this is a strong positive correlation between temperature and electricity cost. And like I said, positive correlation and positive slope go hand in hand. Whereas if we would have seen the points decrease, then that would have been a negative correlation. We can use a trend line to model data and help us make predictions from that data. So let's talk about what a trend line is. A trend line is a line that approximates the relationship between the variables or data sets of a scatter plot. So you can see an example of a trend line below. We can use these trend lines to make predictions from the data, such as if we wanted to figure out the cost of the electricity if the temperature was, say for example, 30 degrees Celsius, that would not be on the graph, but the trend line, if we found out that equation, we could figure out what that cost would be for that temperature. How do we draw a trend line? When you have the points plotted on your graph, you want to sketch a line that follows the pattern of the points with approximately the same number of points above it as below it. So you can see in this example that there is about four or five points above and below this line. In example two, we're going to learn how to write the equation of a trend line. The table shows the median home prices in Florida. What is the equation of a trend line that models a relationship between time and home prices? Use the equation to predict the median home price in 2020. So you can see here that we have seven different years and their corresponding median home price. First thing that we're going to do is make a scatter plot of these values. And on our x-axis, instead of using the years 1940, 1950, 50, and beyond, I'm going to let x equals 0 correspond to the first year, which is 1940. This will make it easier to graph. 
Now that we have our points plotted and our graph titled and axes labeled, we are ready to draw a trend line. And remember, you want to draw the line such that there is an approximately equal number of points above the line as well as below the line. After drawing the trend line, we can choose any two points on the trend line, such as 10, 40,000, and 55, 110,000, and use slope-intercept form to write an equation for this line. I labeled the two coordinate points x1, y1, and x2, y2, so we can use those coordinates as well as the slope formula that we revisited in the 2.3 video, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to determine that the slope is approximately 1,556. Looking at the graph, the y-intercept is approximately 24,440, and you can approximate that. Your, maze, your graph may be a little bit different. So based on the slope and the y-intercept, the equation of the trend line is y equals 1,556x plus 24,440. Now we're going to use this equation to predict the median home price in 2020. The year 2020 is 80 years after 1940, so that means our x value is going to be 80. So using this equation, we can plug in 80 for x, and when we multiply, we find out that this answer is 148,920. So that means that is the median home price in 2020. Based on this trend line, the median home price in 2020 will be around 149000 So we just rounded our answer up to the next thousand. So you may be thinking to yourself, that process that we just went through wasn't very accurate. That's why there's this thing called line of best fit. Line of best fit is a line that gives the most accurate model of related data. And the way that we get this line of best fit is we use a function on our graphing calculator called linear regression. And when you look at your calculator, I'll show you how to find it. It's just shown as L-I-N-R-E-G for abbreviation. Okay, so let's go through the process together for the first time. So turn the calculator on and go to the stat button and press edit. And you can see in list one and list two, I just put some random values. So you can choose to put those values as well or make your own. So once you have your values there, we're going to go to stat again, and then right tab over to calc, and then down, go down to number four, linear regression, and press enter, and then press enter once more. So you can see that it created a linear equation based off of the coordinate points that we put in that table. Now there's one thing that I'd like to talk to you about now, and that's called correlation coefficient. And this indicates the strength of the correlation. So now I'm going to show you how to get that on your calculator. The correlation coefficient is represented by the variable r, and like I said, it indicates the strength of the correlation. The correlation coefficient can be between negative 1 and 1, and it can include those endpoints. The closer r is to 1 or negative 1, the more closely the data resembles a line and the more accurate your equation is. Okay, so this next part that I have, you don't need to write this down in your notes, but I did put it up there so that you can look along while we're turning on the di diagnostics. So following these directions, we need to go to second zero, so you're turning the catalog on, and then you need to scroll down to Diagnostics On. And press Enter. And then press Enter once more. And now it says Done. So that means the correlation, will coefficient, correlation coefficient will show up the next time we use it. If you go back to Stat and then over to Calc, and linear regression number four, press enter and enter again. You can see that the correlation coefficient r is showing up. And the r is 0.6385 dot dot dot. That is kind of in the middle, so I wouldn't say that this would be a very strong or accurate equation for the data points. 
In example three, we have another opportunity to learn how to find the line of best fit. And here is the example. You researched the average cost of whole milk for several recent years to look for trends. The table shows you your data. So you can see that we have six different years of data and the average cost for one gallon of milk. So first thing that we're going to do is turn on our calculator and use the stat feature. Part A asks us to find the equation of the line of best fit and then figure out how accurate our line is. So let's turn on the calculator, go to stat, edit, and to clear the previous lists you need to highlight the list title L1 and L2 and press clear and then arrow down and it immediately deletes the data in that column. So clear and then arrow down. So now we can put in the data points. Instead of typing in the actual years for our first column, we're going to do a similar thing that we did in example one. So we're going to say that year zero or the beginning point is 1997. So I showed this in the table. We're going to have the years since 1997. So I have one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11. Those are going to be our input values. Now that I have those data values inputted in for the first column, I'm going to input the average cost for one gallon in each of those years in for the second column. Okay, so once you have the input and output values in your table for the calculator, you can go to Stat and then go over to Calc and down to number four, Linear Regression, press Enter and press Enter once more. And you can see we have an equation. We have the variables A and B. They gave us the numbers, and they also gave us the correlation coefficient. So now we can write our line of best fit equation. Rounding to two decimal places, I have the equation for the line of best fit as y equals 0.09x plus 2.53. And the correlation coefficient r is just the one at the bottom. If you round that to two decimal places, that would be 0 0.92. And as I discussed previously, if that number is close to positive one or negative one, then we have a good line of best fit. So we would say since this, is, this r is close to one, the line of best fit is quite accurate. If you're wondering what that R squared value is for, we will be using that when we deal with nonlinear functions later this year. So you don't need to worry about that value right now. We're just focusing in on the regular lowercase r for the correlation coefficient. For part B, we're asked to use our equation that we just found. It's also known as the linear model. And we need to determine how much we would expect to pay for a gallon of whole milk in the year 2020. So I talked about this earlier. This is actually one of our objectives, we can make predictions from linear models. So obviously 2020 is not here yet, and it's also not in the chart. So we're going to use our equation, and now we just need to figure out what should our x value be. Well, remember, the x stood for the number of years since 1997. So in order to determine what our x value should be in this situation, you just need to do 2020 or 2020 minus 1997 and you should get 23 so that means 23 years have passed since 1997 so that's the number we're going to be inputting for our equation when you multiply and add you get y equals 4.6 or 460 if you want to put the two decimal places for money. So that means in the year 2020, we could expect to pay about $4.60 for a gallon of whole milk. So in this lesson, we learned about scatter plots, correlation, trend lines, line of best fit, and correlation coefficients. And we looked at several different real life situations that require those concepts. Now in the bell work we'll look at a couple more and then also in the classwork we'll discover some more real life situations. Make sure you complete these three lesson check problems, make the scatter plots of each of the set of points and describe the correlation and please let me know if you have any question on today's video and I'll see you soon.